here we have a theoretical developmental pathway. The arrows indicate activation and the sideways T indicates deactivation or repression, represses. Um, in this pathway, S activates P, P activates I, I represses K. Since K is repressed, K cannot repress E and E forms spikes. So let's say there is a mutant in the pathway. Uh, let's say P is mutant. So here, so P would be mutant. So in this case, S cannot activate P. P cannot activate I. I isn't repressing K. K represses E. So E cannot activate spikes. So no spikes are formed. Now, how about I? So let's say I is mutant. So uh, S activates P, P activates I, but in this case, I is mutant. So I cannot repress K, K represses E, so spikes are not made. How about I and E are mutant? So S activates P, P activates mutant I, I cannot repress K, K will repress E, but since E is mutated, so no spikes are made. Now what if S and K are mutant? S cannot activate P, so P cannot activate I. So I cannot block K, but since K is mutated also, K cannot block E. So here, E forms spikes. So why don't all cells have spikes in the ectoderm? Well, how, well, depends on the beetle. If the beetle needs spikes, for its survival, then the pathway will be completed, will go through. Then, but what if the beetle does not need spikes? Then there will be mutations along the pathway that prevent the spike formation.